Buenos dias! This is your instructor, Sir Arif. Come and join me as I discuss the lesson 3, Problem Solving and Reasoning of Mathematics in a Modern World. Let us begin! There are four intended learning outcomes for this step. The first learning outcome is to use different types of reasoning to justify statements and arguments made about mathematics and mathematical concepts. The second is to write clear and logical proofs. The third is to solve problems involving pattern and recreational problems following Polya's four steps. And the last one is to organize one's methods and approaches for proving and solving problems. In 1945, the four basic steps was enunciated by George Polya. So who is George Polya then? George Polya was born in Hungary and received his PhD from the University of Budapest. He moved to the United States in 1940 and after a brief stay at the Brown University, he joined the faculty at Stanford University and taught there until and after his retirement. In addition to being a permanent mathematician, he focused on the vital importance of mathematics education. At Stanford, he published 10 books, including How to Solve It in 1945, which has been translated into 15 languages. He developed the four-step problem-solving process. So the following are the four steps problem-solving process developed by Polya. First is to understand the problem. Second, you devise the plan. Third, you carry out the plan. Then fourth is to look back. Now let us discuss them one by one. So these are the key questions that you have to ask yourselves whether you had understood the problem. Can you state the problem in your own words? What are you trying to find or do? What are the unknowns? What information do you obtain from the problem? What information, if any, is missing or not needed? In devising a plan, the following list of strategies is very useful. The first one, look for a pattern. Next, examine related problems and determine if the same technique applied to them can be applied to the current problem. Then the third is examine a simpler or special case of the problem to gain insight into the solution of the original problem. Fourth, make a table or list. Next, make a diagram. Next, write an equation. Next, use guess and check. Work backward. Identify a sub goal. Use indirect reasoning. Then lastly, you may use a direct reasoning. Let me ask you a question. What is the sum of the integers from 1 to 100? Can you manage to answer it in less than 30 seconds? Seems difficult to write. Well, Carl Frederick Boss managed to answer it instantly at age 7. His answer is 5,050. So how did he do it? He simply add up 1 to 100 and 2 to 99, 3 to 98, which all add up to 101. Pairing these numbers will make 50 pairs. So 50 times 101 is 5,050. Brilliant, right? Inductive reasoning. It is a process that uses our knowledge in making a general inference about unfamiliar occurrences. 
based on observation and pattern. It is using a specific example to make a general rule. Use inductive reasoning to find the next two terms. Letter A, 5, 50, 500, 5,000. What will be the next two terms? Correct, 50,000 and 500,000. Letter B, A, 6, C, 12, E, 18. What will be the next two terms? Correct, G and 24. Example 2, what is the next figure in the pattern? Correct. That is a heptagon. Another strategy of devising a plan is to use a counterexample. It is an example that contradicts the assumption and shows that a statement is false. Example Every number that is a multiple of 10 is divisible by 4 that is 100 110 120 and so on 100 divided by 4 equals 25 then therefore we can say that 4 divides 100 110 divided by 4 is 27.5 therefore we can say that 4 does not divide 110. Therefore, not all numbers that is a multiple of 10 is divisible by 4. Deductive reasoning. It is a process by which conclusions are made based on previously known facts or by employing general assumptions, procedures, or principles. It is applying a general rule the specific example. It is also the way of showing that certain statements follow logically from agreed upon assumptions and proven facts, and there is a need to justify every step with a reason. Here is an example of a deductive reasoning. Solve for x in the equation 3 times the quantity x plus 4 minus 2x equals 20. Justify your answer. Of course, we write the given. The next is, we distribute 3 to the quantity x plus 4. Next is, by the use of commutative property, we can interchange 12 and a negative 2x. Then by closure property, is we combine the like terms. By transposition, we transfer positive 12 that will become negative 12 on the other side. And by closure property, we had combined 20 and the negative 12. The result is x equals 8. Another example. Each four neighbors, Sian, Maria, Sarah, and Brian, has a different occupation, editor, banker, chef, or dentist. From the following clues, determine the occupation of each neighbor. The first clue, Maria gets home from work after the banker but before the dentist. The second, Sarah, who is the last to get home from work, is not the editor. Third, the dentist and Sarah leave for work at the same time. Then the last hint, the banker lives next door to Brian. Now let's solve the problem one by one using the clues given. The first clue was, Maria gets home from work after the banker but before the dentist. It gives us the idea that Maria 
is not the banker nor the dentist. The second clue, Sarah, who is the last to get home from work, is not the editor. Therefore, Sarah is not the editor. And remember in clue number one, the banker gets home from work before Maria. Therefore, Sarah, who is the last to get home from work, is not the banker. The third clue, the dentist and Sarah leave for work at the same time. Therefore, the dentist is not Sarah. Therefore, Sarah is the chef. And since Sarah is the chef, Sian, Maria, and Brian are not the chef. Maria is not the banker, the chef, and not a dentist. Therefore, Maria is the editor. And since the editor is Maria, Sian and Brian are not the editor. Next clue, the banker lives next door to Brian. Therefore, Brian is not the banker. Therefore, Brian is the dentist. And Cian is the banker. How about you try solving this simple problem using the hints given? Brianna, Ryan, Tyler and Ashley were recently elected as a new class officers, president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer of the sophomore class of Summit College. From the following clues, determine which position each holds. Here are the hints. Ashley is younger than the president but older than the treasurer. Brianna and the secretary are both the same age and they are the youngest members of the group. Then the third one, Tyler and the secretary are next door neighbors. Let us now solve the problem using the first hint. Ashley is younger than the president, but older than the treasurer. It gives us the idea that Ashley is not the president nor the treasurer. Number two, Brianna and the secretary are both the same age, and they are the youngest members of the group. Therefore, Brianna is not the secretary. It also gives us the idea that Brianna is not the president since Ashley is younger than the president. Also, Ashley is not the secretary because Ashley is not the youngest member of the group. Since Ashley is not the president, secretary, and treasurer, therefore Ashley is the vice president. Therefore, Brianna, Ryan, and Tyler are not vice presidents. And Brianna is the treasurer. Ryan and Tyler are not the treasurer. Tyler and the secretary are next door neighbors. Therefore, Tyler is not the secretary. And Ryan is not the president. So, Ryan is the secretary and Tyler is the president. How many triangles are there in the figure? A. 9 B. 10 C. 12 or D 13 The correct answer is D 13 You want to know why Here is the explanation Let's start by counting the small triangles 1 2 3 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 small triangles. Now, 
we begin counting the bigger triangles. One, two, three. There are three bigger triangles. Now, the last triangle remaining is the biggest one. There is only one biggest triangle for a total of 13 triangles. The next example requires an illustration using a Venn diagram. In a survey of 110 college freshmen that investigated their high school backgrounds, the following information was gathered. 25 took physics, 45 took biology, 48 took mathematics, 10 took physics and math, 8 took biology and math, 8 took physics and biology, and 5 took all the three subjects. This can be answered using working backwards. Let's consider this red circle to be the students enrolled in physics. The violet circle is for biology, and the green circle is for mathematics. Let's start by putting five. Five took all three subjects. That will be at the center. Next is six took physics and biology. Physics and biology is red and violet. Since five is already in between physics and biology, we now have one student left. That is one. Next is eight took biology and mathematics that is in between biology and mathematics five is already there so we have three next is ten took physics and mathematics that is between physics and math five is already there so we have five left Next is 48 took mathematics. So for the green circle, we already have 5, 5, and 3, which means we have 35 students left. Next is 45 for biology, but we already have 3, 5, and 1. So the remaining students are 36. Next, there are 25 to physics. 5, 5, and 1 is already there. Therefore, 14 students. So that's how we illustrate the given using a Venn diagram. Word problems. world population. As of 2017, the world population is estimated at 7.6 billion. And the world population can be modeled using the formula A equals P E to the power of R T, where A is the size of the population after it grows. P is the initial number of people and R is the rate of growth, T is the time, and E is the Euler's constant. Let's try this example. The exponential growth model A is equal to 30 E to the power of 0 0.02 T describes the population of a city in the Philippines in thousands, T years after 1995. A. What was the population of the city in 1995? B. What will be the population in 2030? We then start by answering letter A. What was the population of the city in 1995? Of course, we were going to use the given, the exponential growth model. We then substitute t by 0 since the population started with 1995. 
Afterwards, we multiply 0 0.02 by 0 and e to the power 0 is 1. 30 times 1 is 30. Therefore, the city population in 1995 is 30,000. Now, let's try solving for B. What will be the population in 2030? Of course, we may use again with the formula, the exponential growth model. We substitute T by 35 because it was 35 years after 1995. We multiply 0 0.02 by 35, we get 0 0.7 e to the power 0 0.7 is 2.0138. It's exactly 2.0137527.07 times 30, you will get 60.4126. Therefore, the city population in 2030 will be 60,413. How about you try solving the next example? The exponential growth model A is equal to 50 e to the power of 0.07t describes the population of a city in the Philippines in thousand t years after 1997. What was the population of the city after 20 years? What will be the population in 2037? You may pause the video for you to answer. The correct answer for letter A is the population of the city after 20 years is 202,760. The correct answer for letter B is the population of the city in 2037 is 822,233. So there you have it, Mathematics in the Modern World Lesson 3, Problem Solving and Reasoning. Hope you will gonna be with me again for Lesson 4. This is Sir Arves signing off. Bye!